Hi everybody, I thought I'd do a video today with five tips um, for newcomers into the sport. Um, these are things that I've learned myself or that other people in the sport have told me and that I've found to actually be uh, worth listening to. So stick around for these five and um, I think I'll put one bonus one that I thought of just before I started this uh, towards the end. So. Uh, stay tuned if you can if you haven't subscribed already then please click subscribe uh, that would really help the channel out thanks number five I'd say get a helper from the start um, and that means it could be the kids it could be the wife or a girlfriend or just a partner that helps you uh, occasionally or a neighbor and uh, I think that's quite important for occasions when you know you might be stuck at work or if you want to go on holiday which is something that we did recently um, I had to show everybody what to do and actually I found that in the time that I had wasn't really enough to make sure that they did absolutely everything right so uh, I think it's worth getting them in from the start and you never know they might want to uh, come in in with you um, so it's more of a partnership or they might want to set their own loft up as well so if there's somebody that's registering an interest with it when you tell them that you're going to be doing it then uh, I think that's well worth doing if you've got kids then definitely help them as well uh, get them involved as well because you know if you go to work early in the morning they might open up for you which is something that my kids do uh, and my wife she'll uh, often open them up because of these birds are on darkness and then I can close them up in the uh, evening when I get back Number four, get all of your birds together at the same time. Now that's uh, something that uh, the guys were telling me at my club and they said basically that if you get your birds at different times, you, know, you might get some uh, uh, half a dozen or a dozen and then a month later get some more or three weeks or four weeks later get some more. It can really cause issues with them um, and, and this is something that I've kind of discovered. It's not been a super issue at the moment but I have noticed the difference you get your first birds starting to fly really well and then you introduce some others and that are younger and the first lot just don't fly as far uh, or as much and they're kind of held back and by the others and i found that you know i've had three lots of young birds now and so it's um it's difficult to turn birds down when people say that they've got birds for you it is difficult to, to turn them down but you can see i've got some birds here these young ones are in the corner uh, you know and they're going to be a couple of weeks off flying around where i've got others that are uh, you know roosting right at the top and and then when i let them out they'll go flying for 20 minutes 30 minutes when before they were flying for even longer so um if you can get them all at the same time right number three counting down get an aviary um so i put this aviary on and it's been absolutely brilliant. It's it's good for several reasons. Um, even if it's a small one, just like this, uh, it means that the birds can learn their surroundings. Um, so one of the first things that you do when you get your young birds when they're when they're weaned is you let them out, and you let them out before they can fly too fast because you don't you don't want them to fly away. Um, but you need to let them out so they can learn where they live. The great thing about the aviary is this is the view they have. You know they can sit. Uh, they can perch up there and they can see my garden, they can see my house um, and they can see everything around and they, it just gets them used to where they live so that when they do finally go out they just sort of already know the area. Obviously they can't see behind them but there's no reason if you've got the room you can't have an aviary on the back or a window on the back but um, it just means that you, they're still getting outside, they're still getting fresh air um, even when they're not actually out uh, officially. So I'd, I'd definitely, uh, I'd definitely recommend planning one of those onto your your pigeon loft. Number two, this is something that's that I think anyway. It's not a hard and fast rule, but I would say don't buy expensive birds. So there's some really expensive birds out there. You can people will sell you a kit of six or twelve, um, but if you if you're a newcomer and you're genuine and you join in a new club, uh, most people will breed them for you. Uh, they'll breed you some. Most people won't have rubbish birds in their stock loft, so they're not going to breed rubbish birds. Uh, so the birds that you do get given to you, or even if it's just a little bit of money, um, then they're going to be decent birds to start with, generally speaking. I don't know if that's a hard and fast rule, but that's something that I think. Um, I haven't paid for a single bird yet. All of these have just been gifted to me um, from the members of my club, which is great. I'm not sure if 
I mean, I think I'm particularly lucky with that, but you know, it's certainly, uh, it's certainly good. But I wouldn't dream of spending, you know, a hundred pounds a bird or fifty pounds a bird, because um, I, you know, I've lost three already to hawks. I haven't done a single training toss yet. So by the time I get to training these, no doubt I will lose some more, um, and and it will be, uh, you know, a lot of it will be down to me tossing them at the wrong time or at the wrong location. So, you know, I'd rather lose a bird that was gifted than lose a bird that I've paid a lot of money for. Also, you don't really know what you're buying. I mean, uh, I've been doing this uh, a few months and I don't know what a good bird is and what a bad bird is, uh, unless you're just lucky um, or you think that oh, a bird, because it's a lot of money, is going to be great. I don't think it works that way. So uh, don't go spending loads of money on a, um, on a, on a bird that's got a, a good lineage because you know they all they've all got good lineages you can you can probably link all of these to winners at some point um or most birds to, to winners at some point that's why people have still got them we've got number one and this is something that seems a lot of people have been saying online uh, and that's don't over medicate or buy loads of supplements there are loads of supplements i've seen out there that look like they're homemade <clears throat> i don't know what the efficacy of some of them alike, whether they're actually any good or not, but um, I doubt it. A lot of it. I mean, these have only, all these have had so far is a um, a bit of uh, canker treatment, coxidosis, and a spot on on the back to get rid of the lice which they uh, they had. Um, they've got to have a vaccination, and 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 th those things alone, they're pretty standard. Um, but you 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 do that, and so far these are pretty healthy. But if you over populate your birds in your loft then that's when you start to get trouble um but if you but but, but i wouldn't dream of medicating these with anything uh, else unless they uh, they start to show symptoms and then you can send off you can send off samples uh, of stools to to get an idea of what's in the loft i know that if you if you if you get some of these samples from the stools there you, you can't be you can't be guaranteed to get it from the right bird so if you see some runny droppings, you don't know for sure that it's from the bird that's sat on these, because these all swap V perches all the time. Um, but you know that if you see some runny, runny droppings, then you know that there's, there's something going wrong and you can, you can find out what's in the loft. But uh, I think the, the general rule is don't over-medicate. Um, when it comes to pigeon racing, strategy matters uh, in this sport. There's a lot more involved than I ever thought there would be um, because there's so many variables and so many unknowns um, it's a little bit like sailing you know some of the guys that I've been with when they've been racing you know if there's an east wind they'll do well if there's a west wind they might not if it's a northerly wind they, they might do well it really does depend on their location where the liberation point is um, on the weather um, so whether it's cloudy or whether it's slightly wet or um, how strong the wind is, it, this, what time of the day that they're let out. Then you've got other things that you've got no control over like bird of prey. Um, if so, if, there's, if they get hit by peregrines or, or anything else, if they clash with another liberation that can cause problems. Um, and then you've got, how, you know, how well do, the, do your birds know the route home? You know, if you've only tossed them a few times and they don't really know the fastest route home or they get dragged along you know 20 miles east of where you live do they know how to get back to the further west you know if you haven't trained for that then then perhaps they don't um and then there's how how good are they at um at how good is their homing instinct you know there's so many variations what are you feeding them how much are you feeding them uh they talk about heavy feeds and light feeds and carbs and fats and oils and all sorts of different things and you know most of it i don't know about yet but there is a lot of strategy involved and then you've got the um the other thing is is the numbers the, the amount of birds that people spend uh, the amount of birds that people send so as a general rule it seems that the more birds you send the more likely you are to do well because um more birds are going to your particular location and they might suck in others so it does seem to be that if you're only sending a handful of birds, you won't expect to place quite so high. Uh, so that's why a lot of the top flyers will send a decent sized team to, you know, and I think it, it kind of makes sense really, doesn't it? But obviously that takes a bit more dedication. You've got to have the space. So for, for us, we've got 30 odd birds. Um, we obviously won't send them all to any one race. So we're always going to be a smaller uh, team uh, with this current loft. Um, so we've got to manage my expectations a little bit. And if you're the same, then you know, you're unlikely you're gonna 
um, you know, go top in the Fed first time out or first year out. But it's kind of exciting. I quite like the fact that there's so many variables um, involved in, in in the sport because if it was straightforward and you just send them every week and just hope that they come back, then uh, and you might place, then that's kind of. I mean, there is an element of that, I guess, anyway. But it's a little bit boring. Whereas if you actually work hard and you know what to do and how to train them and what to feed them and when to train them and whether you do darkness or you don't do darkness, whether you're doing roundabout system and you know um, all, all the different systems that there are. Some might work, some might not work. Um, there's just lots and lots of variables, and I think that's what makes the sport interesting. It's a little bit uh, chess, F1. Obviously, there's no um, engines involved, and certainly not the amount of money. But there's still strategy, and these—that's the thing about these—is there's a lot. The hobby is uh, it's really dependent on on your strategy, um, and the amount of dedication as well. I think you've got to be, from what I've seen anyway, you've got to be dedicated. You've got to train your birds. You've got to send them down the road. Um, and obviously, this is coming from somebody that's never done a training toss. This is just from what I've been, um, what I've been told, or what I've, what I've seen, what I've seen myself. So, um, the guys that seem to do the best in our federation that I see always top the, um, <clears throat> for the few races that I've seen so far that have been topping the sheets, all have the same thing in common. They know the birds. They do plenty of training tosses. They send plenty of birds. And they just know what they're doing. They know what they're talking about. Um, and they're and they're dedicated guys. And and you know they know everything about it. So they know what to do with strategy. Um, and and that just seems to be a, a running theme. And then which one wins depends on uh, whether they clash or where the wind's blowing. And I think that's quite a that's kind of a good thing. It mixes it up a little bit as well. So um, it's very competitive, which I think is a good thing. Um, but yeah, so there we go. There's my uh, my five things. Please subscribe. Um, I'll probably have some more. I'll probably change those things when when I, when I've started racing. Um, but I thought I'd probably better start putting something uh, useful out there. Hopefully, you found that useful. So, right, bye.